Hey everybody, I'm Johnny Clark Cards. Hope you're all doing well. It is Friday, August 2nd, and uh, if you're a Yankee fan or even a, you know, kind of vintage era baseball fan, you know, earlier than, say, the 1980s, um, you probably have a good idea of what August 2nd uh, each year kind of brings memories of, and uh, that is, of course, the unfortunate and tragic passing away of uh, the Yankees captain at the time, number 15, Thurman Munson. It was 45 years ago that that happened, um, and I actually vaguely recall that day. Um, I was six years old. It happened, I mean, it happened in mid-afternoon, I think, because uh, my, my kind of main recollection of that was two things, actually. Um, I remember um, them cutting into uh, TV programming. I think my mom had ABC on at the time. She, was, she may have been watching soap operas. Uh, and so, Mom, you're probably watching this, so if you are, you might remember that yourself. But um, uh, I believe it was Frank Reynolds, who was the ABC World News uh, Tonight anchor at the time, who cut in to announce that uh, Thurman's plane crashed and um, he died. So um, I do recall that kind of uh, breaking into uh, the TV uh, show at the time. And then I do remember later that evening, I remember watching the first like couple of innings, maybe, before I went to bed, of a, a, it was the first game of a four-game Yankees and Orioles series at Yankee Stadium. The next night, I should say, it wasn't Thursday night. It was Thursday. It was an off day. August second was a Thursday uh, in 1979, and uh, the Yankees had just got done with a series in Chicago against the White Sox, um, and uh, he was back home in um, in Ohio for the off day, practicing takeoffs and landings. Um, but the next night, Friday, I recall, um, was the first game of a four-game series between the Yankees and Orioles. And I remember both teams standing on the uh, baselines, kind of paying their respects. And, you know, it was just really, obviously, really quiet and kind of a somber moment. Even for, a, you know, a six-year-old could kind of recognize the moment for what it was. Um, so, anyway, I uh, just wanted to kind of touch on a memory there. But I also want to share a few cards uh, also in this video of Thurman uh, that I have. He is, um, he is one of my favorite players in baseball, you know, history. Um, if I had a starting lineup, he'd be the catcher for sure. And um, in terms of favorites of all time. Uh, so I just thought I'd take a few minutes here and just uh, flip the phone around, just uh, show a few cards of Thurman Munson, the captain of the Yankees at that time in the 70s. Um, most of all of these I've already shown before, but, you know, maybe if you're a newer subscriber to my channel, first off, thank you very much. Uh, perhaps you haven't seen some of these, so... Um, that's why I thought I'd take a couple of minutes here and just uh, uh, put those out in front of the camera here on the phone. So I'll turn it around and get right to it. Hang on a sec. Okay, I'll try to go through these as quick as I can here. Um, one thing I did want to note before I, uh, well, actually, I'll put my rookie card of Thurman here up first. Um, and I'll just uh, mention a little bit as I just kind of have this up here for a sec. It's in an SGC 6, 70 tops. Um, I don't remember the month, the kind of well-known Monday night baseball on ABC game with, uh, between the Yankees and Orioles, which was the finale of that four game series. That was, um, as many of you probably know, uh, was, um, happened just a mere hours after the funeral. And so, uh, owner George Steinbrenner flew the whole team to, uh, Canton, Ohio, or I believe it was in Canton, Ohio. Um, uh, where uh, Thurman's funeral was, and then they had to get, get right back to the uh, to the ballpark at Yankee Stadium to finish that Orioles game. Uh, Bobby Mercer, I believe, gave either the eulogy or the main eulogy. Um, he was Thurman's good friend, um, and then he ended up uh, having a one of his best games in the latter years of his career. Uh, Mercer did made him eight, eighty. Uh, yeah, 79 um, was one of his... He lasted into the early 80s, but 79, that game in 79, he, I think, drove in all five runs, and the Yankees, I think, won 5-4, to four, if I remember right. Um, uh, he just had a, a heck of a game and kind of dedicated it to to Thurman, naturally. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was, that was a pretty memorable um, night for the Yankees um, and day overall for Yankee fans. I don't remember that day, but... Um, I do like watching a video clip of, uh, of that night every so often. But anyway, I just wanted to mention that piece that I just didn't remember that game, but I remembered the, the Friday night opener a little bit. Uh, but here's my Thurman rookie card, 1970 tops in a SGC6. I really like this one. Um, several of these I bought 
uh, raw. I don't have the whole regular run for Thurman yet. It's something I'll get at some point. It's not like an active goal currently. Um, this one I did not buy raw. This one I picked up at a card show just like this. It's an SGC4 of his famous 71 tops card. Um, it's not a great four. Actually kind of has a little bit of a wrinkle here that's pretty noticeable. Um, and it's a lot of these cards are way off center right. And this one is, is kind of that example as well, but I still love it. Um, I might upgrade it someday, but uh, for now it's just, uh, it still is what it is. And I also happen to have this that I picked up about a year ago. Same photo, which I think is super cool. It's a press guide uh, for TV and radio and newspaper uh, journalists that were um, used, I guess, daily in the press box and carried with them on the road. So this is this is just for the media that has just lots of little factoids in it. I showed this in one other video a while back. It's things like this I just love. It also has a picture of Thurman down here hitting. Um, it's the 1971 edition, and so he was the 1970 Rookie of the Year in the AL. And Ralph Houck happened to be the manager of the year that year in the AL. But uh, I just love that they have this photo on there, too. Uh, but there's, I got a 71 and an SGC4. And then here's the best Thurman card I have in terms of a grade. It's 72 tops, which I did buy raw at a card show about a year and a half ago. And it came back, it's actually just a crinkle in the, in the, um, in the sleeve here graded card sleeve but it came back an awesome eight by sgc um love this card love that it came back in eight it's one of my best grading results actually of any card i've sent in to, for grading so it's just a really cool one so i might not show the backs of all of these but um i have a 73 i was thinking about getting this graded at some point but now i'm actually pretty sure that this card is trimmed <laughs> Uh, I bought this card on eBay for about three, $3 and change, and now I know why a few years later. I, me I measured it recently against some other 73s, and I'm pretty sure it's trimmed, um, which to me is kind of ridiculous if it is, but I'm not going to take the chance to find out by sending it in. Um, but I think one of these borders is trimmed, probably this side, because this looks more like a rough cut. But um, it is what it is. Will I buy a slab version at some point? I might, but uh, for now, that's my 73 Thurman. Um, I do have a 74, not graded yet. In fact, I don't have any, oh, I have one more graded Thurman that I'll get to in a sec, but uh, this one came close to getting to my um, most recent submission for SGC that I dropped off at the National. This might go out in my next one, whenever that might be, um, but uh, it's a pretty decent 74, so. I don't necessarily have to have all of his cards, his regular tops cards graded, but I kind of do. But uh, we'll see if uh, how that how that evolves over the uh, coming months and years. I, again, I'm not I'm not in a hurry to finish his um, player run, but it'll happen at some point. I don't have either of his 75 tops. I want both his regular and mini. I don't have either yet. Um, those are going to be hopefully fairly soon additions of upcoming. But I have his 76. Uh, that I picked up at a card show as well. So, you know, between this and the 74, which I also got at a show, hopeful that these are good. These look overall quite good um, in terms of, you know, normal size. Um, this is a decent one. I will grade this one at some point as well. Um, but uh, I do like the beard on this one, not just the mustache. It's his MVP year, of course. Really like that card. Here is another one I really like. Um... And 77 is not my favorite set, but this card is one of one of my favorite Thurman cards. Um, and not just because it got a 7 by SGC. That certainly adds to it, though. I love this card um, even more as a result. But uh, I just love his smile on this card because uh, he wasn't known. Uh, let's just say he wasn't the uh, Ernie Banks of the Yankees in terms of, you know, always smiling, let's play two. He was kind of a, he was kind of a grump. To some, uh, to some degree on a lot of days, but that's what kind of endeared him to so many fans because he just backed it up on the field and he just wanted to play. Um, so, I don't know. It's, uh, so this is an, un, an uncommon kind of shot for Thurman, and so that makes this card even more special. Um, really nice one in a seven. And I don't have his 78 yet. Um, in 1978, Tops is my first, first collected set and my favorite set of all time. Uh, I just don't have that one yet, and uh, I will probably buy that one graded at some point. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure to get a nice copy. I'm probably going to want to get it in an 8, actually. So um, at some point, I'll uh, I'll focus on that and um, 
and get the, you know, <laughs> earmark the funds accordingly. I do have a 79. I actually have two 79s. I have another one up on a little, uh, a uh, little wall display that I got of some Yankee cards that, uh, you know, are mostly kind of common and such, but nothing, or just not great cards of 70s Yankees mostly, but uh, not great condition, so to speak. But um, but this is a uh, nice nice corners on this one, even though it is off-center. I think I got this at an LCS for probably like four bucks or something, but not sure if I would grade this one because of how off-center it is, but uh, maybe I'll buy a graded copy of this at some point. But uh, yeah, this is his last standard issue. 79 tops but uh i'm gonna take a few more minutes and show some other other cards of his that i've picked up over the uh since especially since i got back in the hobby i've got uh you know i kind of pc them or i do pc them i should say for sure these are some tops chrome platinum anniversary cards this is the 53 style from 2022 and i'm going to take a moment to share this version of this that I actually have in my binder of my set for this. Uh, so I just took it out of here for a moment, but uh, I pulled this one out of a pack, so I was pretty psyched to do that. It's uh, numbered to 99, number four out of 99. I love that he's got another Yankee captain's number, <laughs> Lou Gehrig, as, uh, as his, um, or as the uh, kind of serial number on this one in terms of, you know, parallel. But, uh, Pretty cool green parallel. It's the platinum green toile parallel or some such, but really like that one. Um, I'll flip through these really quick just to kind of show other examples of some Thurman cards they've gotten over the last few years. This one I like. It's Alan and Ginter X, actually, from 22, so it's the black uh, black cards. Just a, kind of a cool one there. I like he's in his road jersey there. This is a cool card, I think. It's from 2021 Tops because it's got the 70th uh, anniversary logo. It's the double headers insert they did. So there's a 71. There's a 79. So that's kind of cool. I kind of like those double headers that they did that year. I think they've done that a few times over the years. There's another Stadium Club card. There's a Heritage card. This is actually not a real 75. This is actually a Topps Archives card. Um, Alan and Ginter insert. I think this was a Topps update insert, maybe in 20, Turkey Red. And a few other ones. My friend Tim, my good friend Tim, up uh, north here in Michigan a little bit, sent me these two at, uh, at one point. I think on two different mailings, I guess. Um, this one, unfortunately, did not uh, do well in the through the Postal Service, unfortunately. Still a cool card, though. And um, this one he sent me was really cool. It's like a, uh, an art card from an artist named Edward Vela in, from 2018. So and he signed it and everything. So thanks again, Tim, for sending this to me. I really like this. I have these cards all in kind of a, um, in a team bag. And uh, I have it where uh, I've got, uh, I think I have this one on one side on top. And I actually have this one on the other side face up like that. So just kind of have those with my other PC players that I have, um, like Don Mattingly and Aaron Judge and Derek Jeter. I kind of PC all those guys. Um, I'm going to show two more cards and we'll wrap it up. Uh, in 2021, I bought, uh, when I was first year fully back in, so I was dabbling in a lot of top stuff. Um, I bought several Project 70 cards that year, about a dozen or so. Just thought they were kind of cool art cards. And one was a Thurman Munson one, so I did buy this one. I actually hadn't seen this one in probably over a year. So it's just kind of cool to pull it out again, take a peek at it. So in that respect, I kind of like having them, just from a pure collecting kind of thing, kind of funky and cool. And took enough four trains to the to the stadium. Yep, it's the four. Taking enough four trains to the stadium over the years back when I was living in the city many years ago. So that's a cool card. And then the last card I'm going to show is my absolute favorite break hit of all time when I was breaking in 21 and 22. Somehow I pulled, or not pulled, I got this in a break. 2021, I've shown this a couple times before. 2021 Topps Museum Collection. This is a one of one um, four piece bat relic, primary pieces legends featuring Thurman Munson. So four, four pieces of his bat. There's no jersey in here, which would make it pretty even, you know, a pretty incredible uh, relic card. It already is an incredible relic card for me, but. Um, I do love those bat pieces and just kind of, you know, the fact that it's a one-on-one -on -one is pretty sweet. So, um, but that, that is, uh, that, those are the Thurman cards I kind of have right now. Just thought I'd uh, take a few minutes and 
and uh, kind of share uh, some thoughts there about Thurman. I only got to see him play a couple of times. Or, you know, I only got to see him play... Yeah, I got to see him live twice, actually. Uh, my first game in 78. And I had to look up the box score uh, years years and years later. Uh, he actually had a game-tying double in that game in the eighth, seventh or eighth inning. Seventh inning. So, to me, that is just really cool. Um, against Oakland um, in 1978. And then in 79, he also played... Um, it was my second game I went to. Um, I can't remember what he did in that game. It was a Saturday night game, and it was like a terrible rainy game. We actually left after like three or four innings, so I probably got to see him hit once, if I had to guess. Um, and it was in like, um, oh, I'm pretty sure it was before he passed away. I'm pretty sure of that in 79. Um, I'm actually not certain of that now, and I need to look that up again, but I think it was in July, actually. Um, I'll have to look it up. It was against Minnesota. It was a Saturday night, and it was rainy. It very well could have been after he passed away. I actually can't remember now. But So if that's the case, I only got to see him in person once. But anyway, um, I'll check on that for myself. But uh, thanks again for watching, everybody. And um, just again, thought I'd take a, uh, a few minutes to share some cards of uh, my favorite catcher of all time and one of my favorite players of all time. Take care. Have a great weekend. And until the next one.